Petit Pnumbu, talking about all these guys. Papa, na flex so, for other African nations. So. You won't believe it. Cameroonians, Kenyans, uh, Ugandans. I think Kenyans are a little bit more okay. But I mean, like, their politicians are like extra, extra. So in Senegal, okay, these two guys, like, they treat you in Nigeria. So it was, it was a sonko. This is their full story now, okay, but not full, full but summary. So the Sonko guy happened to be uh, the one uh, like uh, Shore, for example. Let's say Sonko was like Shore. And there are other people, okay, in another set of political parties too. And this guy, so that Sonko guy was the presidential candidate, okay, of that uh, party. And it was the guy everywhere. You see that guy you saw his speech that day talking about France, leaving Africa alone and all that. That's some cool guy. So he was the presidential candidate. As they were preparing for the election, like last year, almost announcement just came from the from the presidential palace that they have to be arrested. So they arrested the guy. Eh? And while in detention, election still deal. They arrested other people too. People supporting him. Some of them killed. They disqualified him. Since he's been disqualified, that's Sonko guy. That means he can't participate in the election. Sonko was in prison. Uh, Faye is, was in prison. And they said he happened to be the secretary, rather, right? He wasn't a candidate. So their political party was almost like removed from the election. So fast forward. To let's say about 10 days after the that president, okay, that former president, uh Sal, Marky Sal, after trying his best to disqualify the oppositions for his own anointed candidate, huh? he now went on to even still postpone the election indefinitely. Like we are not going to have election until I am satisfied. That this election is not being hijacked. That's the word. Hijacked by people who don't love Senegal. So they call these young people. People who want to burn down Senegal. People who want to destroy Senegal. People that can never win elections. Who just want to cause trouble. They do not even have the capacity. So they locked them up. And there, that was when the Supreme Court intervened. And they said all the political prisoners should be released. An election must hold. But by then, Sonko can no longer participate. Remember, he would have to go to court. He would have to lift his own uh, ban from participating. In that short period, 20 days uh, to election, they were freed. 10 days to election, they decided, let this guy go and take the slot and be the presidential candidate. And you know what happened? In the election, eh? They defeated the establishment. They defeated those who held power and called them. These young people, they called them enemy of Senegal. They were arrested. They were humiliated. They were beaten. They were imprisoned. And everybody is now going to Senegal to say, wow, including this man. Wow. You are doing a great job. Congratulations. Congratulations to you. But by the time Kolu got uh, to Dakar in Senegal, they don't swear in Faye as president. But they still said hi to one another. Here is Kolu. When Kolu got uh, to Senegal uh, this uh, morning or this afternoon. Hello. <laughs> Daniel Nek, the Lord, 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 the Lord,
Mauritanie, au Mali, au Guinée, les deux Guinées, Guinée-Bissau, Guinée-Conakry. Car de ce tour, voilà des gars, les ouananani, bah Sierra, les ouan Théo, machallah, les ouanen Sénégal, mon Dajale, Réo Afrique, petit Réo, petit Réo Mignonek, dit Sénégal. Et Sénégal, maintenant nous maintenant nous sommes en train de mener nous comme nous nous avons organisé une élection transparente, apaisée, dans un pays démocratique, un monarchie, un rôle mon Ibrahim. Mboko Gambi, ministre des Affaires étrangères. Mboko Gambi, voilà. Hamne, Musibere, Musibere, bague de nuit qui est basse pile. Parce que basse pour Magl, c'est un jour mémorable. Mais nous n'allons pas s'en faire. C'est un jour. There is no point in you waiting. They don't finish the swearing in another program that they do when Kolu got there. However, this is what he missed. Devant Dieu. Et devant la nation sénégalaise, je jure de remplir fidèlement la charge de président de la République du Sénégal, d'observer comme de faire observer scrupuleusement les dispositions de la Constitution et des lois, de consacrer toutes mes forces à défendre les institutions constitutionnelles, l'intégrité du territoire l'indépendance nationale et de ne ménager enfin aucun effort pour la réalisation de l'unité africaine. Amen. Amen. I do not understand French. So all I have to say there is just to say amen, because I know he was swearing by the Quran to say he will be faithful, loyal, and honest to Senegal people and all of that. So you wish him well. Like Kolu went on to say, hello, hello, how are you? Thanks very much. Sorry. Daddy. Sorry. Daddy. How are you, Papa? Hold me, hold me. Hold my hand, sorry. Fine. Fine. Ah, it is true. You see the way Kalu was looking at him. Now, this is me. I can say pun intended, intended now, so that if you want to be, if you want to take offense, okay, so that you can actually like, you can validate your, uh, what do you call it? I can validate your uh, rage or anger, kind of. But now this is pun intended. So when I saw that picture, when I saw that video, there was like, it's like somebody who is climbing, okay? So let's assume that, uh, and as an elderly person, okay, climbing and it's like that. Put me, kind of like, like that. Ah, hold me. And then he stands up, uh, and the young man is like that, like that. Oh, how are you? How are you? Like holding him up like that. How are you? I say, ah, fine, fine. There alone is real. So you are now ah, like that. That's exactly the way he played out uh, in my head. And if you don't kind of play, if you don't understand it right, I'll let you see it again. Call is ah, hey, it's true. Um, hey, Kiri. Is this is this small boy. Ah, sorry. Daddy. See that look, right? Ah, he's real. So this is the uh, okay, fine. Like, oh yeah, let's let's take a picture. Come on. Ah, he's real. While the rest, like him in Nigeria, are fighting for whatever it is, the crumb that will be falling off at the table of the likes of uh, Tipnubu and Co. In Nigeria, fighting themselves and tearing themselves apart to show who is more loyal than the other, fighting over crumbs.
your mates are being sworn in as a president of countries, as it should be. Okay? Uh, I just thought I should throw that uh, flaunt it on your faces there. Here is what she would have to say about all of that. As everybody is doing, oh, oh. Oh, and some other people are sounding like ambulance. Wow. Wow. And when you play them together, it's like, wow, 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 like ambulance. Here is what she would have to say about it. You had your chance. You're here, or you keep up with the code there in New Jersey. You pick one. Well, thank you so much, Oware, for joining us today. Let's talk about Mr. Faye, who has now become Senegal's uh, new president. What is your view, first and foremost, about this transition in Senegal? Well, it's important to mention that uh, when Africans uh, were yearning for independence, they actually went for very young, vibrant people. And uh, the question we keep asking ourselves is, at what point did we lose that ability to have young people vibrant, intelligent young people lead the African continent. And uh, you would notice that this happened as a result of uh, colonialism. Uh, the colonial masters weren't too comfortable with young, vibrant, radical uh, African leaders. And that was what led to the death of uh, Lumumba and a bunch of persons that were kicked out of office uh, by the collusion of uh, local African uh, you know, uh, betrayers, and uh, this political colonial uh, leaders all over Africa. So this is not the first time. Even in Nigeria, the first crop of uh, leaders that came up after independence were in their 20s. The man who uh, first moved the motion uh, for Nigeria's independence, as uh, late chief uh, Tony Enahoro, was his 20s, you know, the... Zeke's of this world, Bafemi Awolawas, they weren't old people. Uh, but you again, over time, uh, we lost uh, that opportunity to have vibrancy. And that's why you see Africa the way it is today. But it's interesting that majority of the people I've seen there, this, uh, uh, this uh, swearing in, are the same old African leaders who would not allow the youth to have a chance. But there's a lesson to be learned from Senegal that this presidential change of baton did not happen by accident. It was true, serious revolutionary struggle. Uh, you can imagine someone who came from prison 10 days before and became president of uh, uh, Senegal. When, as a matter of fact, the man who was there didn't want to leave, and he had postponed the election very recently to an unknown date, but uh, he was heavily, heavily resisted. And that's how Senegal came about this. So everybody who is celebrating this must also understand that uh, freedom comes out of struggle. So, I mean, I'm more concerned. It does show. I think it's actually high time I have a show back on here. Uh, somehow, I think I, I was actually like giving him his, you know, giving him his space, having left that uh, the US for the contraption for like Five years. So I think it's time to have him back on my diary political. And then, yes, we would have to. Ah, he's right. You know what I mean? Uh, those who are currently tormenting Nigeria are Nigerians today. Uh, majority of them had a chance when they were in their 20s, when they can think, when they are vibrant, when they are active, where, when they were like pure dreamers who wanted to make things happen. But who do you have today? Those who want to take Nigeria to their graves. Those who want to die so that you can bury them as your leaders. And that is why when, people, when somebody told me that Nigeria is dying, that those who are holding Nigeria together are dying, and therefore Nigeria is dying. The majority of them do not want to make correction now that they are still here. They want to take Nigeria to their graves. And I said, amen to that. It is for your own freedom, okay? Don't, 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 don't get cheeky, all right? Because the breakup of Nigeria may sound a little bit too harsh. But when you break it up, you will save lives. Lives have been lost violently. And the rogues in charge of the contraption from every part they found themselves 
They are part and parcel of the leeches, the canker worms. You know what that is, right? Me too. Sorry. You know what I mean, Abby? You know, sometimes when you say, do you know what I mean? And everybody will be like, yeah, yeah, we do. But then somebody is like, no, I don't. And you're like, okay, me too. But you should know what a canker worm is. I think it's something bad. This not have any problem, Joe. But when I say canker, when I say leeches, they drink blood. How many leeches have you seen? Leeches are insects, I mean. So leeches are like crawlies, right? They drink blood. And these ones are drinking your blood remotely without having to actually touch you, making life hell for you at every given opportunity they have. They were padding budgets. One of them was caught like a, you know, like, like a rat that got caught by the headlight of a car. You know, when you have a rat or animal get caught by the, you know, by the, by the, by the light of floodlight of a car, right? And they froze. That's exactly what happened to one Nigerian senator on a live TV show in Nigeria. He's a senator, right? Supposedly. I'm going to know what happened to my screen. Okay, I'll fix that. <laughs> Sorry, it's because I've got buttons all over this space. Okay, sometimes when something just moves, right? They may be touching something and they may be altering something. Okay, so yes. Uh, where was I? I was talking about one of them got caught in the, you know, in the web of floodlights. They were talking, was like, when I said, come here, you know, you have something about a uh, big budget in. You didn't even check the budget. You as a senator, right? You sat with them when they were supposedly scrutinizing the content of the budget. Now, it's been found that over seven trillion of the budget is money budgeted for projects that don't exist. For example, right? Building one, excuse me, installing one uh, street light. I mean, talking about uh, solar panel uh, street light, solar powered street light for 195 million era for one, one pole like that. But come on now. Here you get snap pattern. Absolutely pardon. You understand? They are constructing a single ball hole for. 135 million era per bowl kilo dinner now pardon uh the senate president that is uh Babiole, is going to spend listen to this one 2.2 billion era in buying refrigerators for the women of his own uh, senatorial district in 2024 budget that's pardon that means they will buy one refrigerator according to them one refrigerator will cost Somewhere around there, seven point five million era for one kilo day now. That's bad, eh? They can't catch one of them. You come. What do you say about these things about padding? I must see display. With the cockroach, like he had to like escape. He can't talk. Say, oh ah, I mean, I don't want you to give me problem. I don't want to be in problem. Oh, Senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Ah, all right, all right, sir. Um, I mean, I do find it so fascinating that a senator would say that the budget was not um, scrutinized by himself line by line when I myself have scrutinized the budget line by line. But <laughs> what can I say there? I think now we, let's move on to the issue of the CNG initiative. Okay, okay. Out Did of you the say you, you, you scrutinized the budget line by line? Yes, sir. Did you? Yes, sir. Did you? Yes, sir. Okay, what's the budget of your senatorial district where you come from? Sorry, sir? What's the total budgetary provisions provision for your senatorial district where you come from? You're asking me for the arithmetic of my senatorial district. I scrutinize it by ministry. So if you want, <laughs> I can tell you your budget in different ministries if you wish to. I have quoted your own budget to you today. Okay. Yes. But let's move on to the CNG initiative, <laughs> if you're willing to. I mean, um, I wasn't. I was not elected by my um, the people of uh, Cross River North. You were. It is your duty, I believe, not mine. But let's move on to your duty as a chairman of the committee on gas. Do you want Mama. to do that? 
Let's talk about the CNG initiative by the federal government. Well, is it what coming? is this budget budget talk now? I want to talk about my Thanksgiving and my representation to my people. People are doing budget, budget, budget. Yes. I will walk away. Well, I think we're people going to go about to say something week. that I, I will go and face Wahala. You should allow me. <laughs> Let me serve my people quietly. Senator, you have spoken about your Thanksgiving. Uh, and uh, Adesua is asking you Major about... Is leaving me, I go do my work. <laughs> are you with us, sir, Senator Jaribe? Because you are still live on, on air. New Zans, the lady. New Senator Jaribe. He just wanted to talk about his Thanksgiving. So that he can show to you how he has empowered the people of his constituency from his own share of all this budget, budget you are talking about. Those are the people speaking for Nigeria, by the way, right? I'm going to take you back to that Senegal, okay, where we just left, right? Where the young president also asked people, the Senegalese, what and how do they see him? From their own uh, point of view, because now French, everybody, they talk. And I don't understand French. Every year, now, so we, so we, so we, so we, so we, so we, so but this was spoke English and kudos to the uh, Arise, uh, Arise News crew who brought this. So the credit is theirs, by the way. Yeah, from Senegal. What are the expectations like uh, for you as Faye becomes a president today? Well, uh, this is an exciting day and I would say a historical day because, uh, as you know, Senegal is one of those few countries in Africa where we have an established democratic tradition. We have elections on time and so on. This one was a little bit fishy, and I'm sure everybody is aware of it. So there was a time where we almost lost hope. But thank God, with uh, the determination of our people, the support of the international... So this is a great day for Senegal, and I believe for uh, Africa as a whole. What are your expectations for Faye? He's quite young, and some say he doesn't have the requisite experience as a president. Yes, that's what I usually say. Uh, experience is important, but I think judgment is more important than experience. Because you also have experience that is experience in crookery. Okay? <laughs> Who need that kind of experience? So the incumbent has always been pounding that argument that the guy is young, he never held any high position, therefore giving him the country is like giving the country to adventurers. I said, don't look at what people say about themselves. Look where they went and see. His short experience is a testimony to what he's going to do as a president. And one thing I wanted to emphasize is our party, PASTIF, is not about people. It's about our projects. It's about our ideas. So the person of the president doesn't matter. He's just the flag bearer. We should look at the message, not at the messenger. True. Yeah. So how much support do we expect from, from the party? Uh, knowing that uh -huh. he's also gotten the support of the main opposition leader, Sonko. Well, we used to say in Senegalese, Sonko moi Joma, Joma moi Sonko. Which means that either way you cut it, you, get, you, get, you, you vote for one president, but you actually get two people. So the PASSEF uh, as a party is united and is going to throw all its weight behind the, the person. And by the way, let's not forget that uh, Basiru was chosen and designated by Sonko. So if what are the expectations like? You get that? So in Senegal, where people are trying to sell the idea, the crooked criminals in Senegal, that he has no experience, like the crooks in Nigeria, they will tell you, oh, you are too young. Oh, you don't have experience. Experience in what? Experience in crookedry. I mean, crookery. No, I think they have a way to pronounce it. Crookery. That's the problem with some of these uh, Oyibos sometimes. But Shaq, get what I mean? Like crooked. It's like the crooks. All right? And then the crooks are a specialist in crookery. Manage them like that, okay? You get what I'm trying to do, right? Okay, grand. Experience in what? Ex experience in being evil, in being selfish, kleptomaniacy, atlas criminals that will sell their people for six pieces of uh, shekels or pieces of silver. What kind of experience? Who doesn't know that uh, 
if you make <laughs> it's crookery. Come on, man. You know, it's not like crookery, it's crook crook crookery or crookedness or crooked. Anyway, we'll pass that one. You shall get idea no matter. Here you get now. So whether I say I'm well, I know say I'm well, so no matter. Dearly. You shall get what I'm saying. So in Senegal, they believe that uh, they voted for one president and they got two. In Sonko and Faye, I call him Faye, but now we know he's called Faye. President Faye, the Syrian Faye of uh, Senegal. And you can start indeed rocking him. If he is going to end up as a disaster that a failed, corrupted, traditional system would want to see, to say, CEO, we told you he has no experience how to run a country. Or it is going to be a sort of, a, you know, a sober reflection for the older generation that either supported the older, I mean, the older crooked uh, crooks in charge of Senegal who told them that. Only old criminals can actually run a country. He would either have to show them that they should reflect, so I mean reflect rather that they should go and reflect in that judgment. And like some, like he said, it's also something for Africa. I'm not going to inspire you with this picture. I can inspire my own children with this because this is the story that is relatable. This is the story that can encourage young people. Okay never to end up like this so that they don't end up like this. And, you know, time is everything. When they are younger, it is always good to him to be this, not this or this. Do you get the message? Eh? Do you get that? Because the criminals in charge of Nigeria are born rogues. One of them is dealt of El Rufaya of Kaduna, a terror sponsor, by the way. Years back, before this rogue had a chance of leading a country that could possibly be, uh, you know, out of Senegal. I don't know if that's too much, okay? But this guy said, uh, you know, in US and Europe, governments are working to reduce debt and fiscal uh, cliff forever. Uh, your Jonathanians are rushing to borrow away the future of our nation. This was uh, 20 watts. Now, check out again.